What is up, ladies and gentlemen? We are currently test driving a 2023 Mazda CX-5 2.5S. This is the base model Mazda CX-5 for 2023. 2.5 liter engine, 187 horsepower, all wheel drive is standard, six speed automatic is standard. And I'll just come out and say it right at the top, out of all of the compact sport utility vehicles that I've driven, Usual suspects, Honda CRV, Ford Edge, RAV4, Subaru Forester. This is the nicest driving one. Um, as far as the chassis refinement, the steering feel, the handling, even the refinement of the four cylinder engine, I would say that as far as a driver's car, this is the nicest one. Uh, in the class, in the mainstream compact SUV class. Obviously, if you get into your BMW X3s with turbocharged six-cylinder engines or Porsche Macans, that's a little bit of a different kettle of fish, but those cars are also far more expensive than this one. The MSRP on this exact car that I'm driving is $28,570. That includes destination charge and a premium upcharge for the metallic white paint um, and as far as value goes that's pretty tough to beat and what impresses me most about driving this car is that it really does feel like it was built from the ground up to be a good driving car like that was kind of what they focused on it's a little smaller as far as both passenger space and cargo space than most of the other vehicles in the class, but that probably contributes to how nice it is to drive. Um, they didn't just take a car that drove okay and put stiffer shocks on it. It's, it's systemic. The whole car was built to feel good on the road, and it does. Uh, they definitely succeeded if that was their goal. And it certainly feels like it was because the car sure feels nice to drive. There's a reason why Car and Driver and everybody else ranks it so highly. Bike lane closed, construction. We'll just go ahead and turn around. The ride is comfortable. Obviously, you do feel the road a little bit more than in some of its competitors. Um, but I find it to be a good trade-off. You do get a nice growl out of the four-cylinder engine. I find the engine to be very smooth and refined. Um, it is available with a turbo. This is not the turbo. I don't even know if I recommend the turbo. Um, I have driven the 2.5 liter turbo engine in a Mazda 3. To me, it makes more sense in that car because that's kind of like a undercover hot hatchback. I don't really feel like SUVs need tons and tons of power. And I think that this one has enough power uh, for what most people would do with it. If I had a criticism as far as driveline or anything else on this car, it's that it only has a six-speed automatic transmission. And most of its competitors at this point have more gears. Um, that does hurt acceleration a little bit. It also hurts fuel economy a little bit. The car would do a little bit better with uh, an eight-speed automatic. Some cars have as many as 10 speeds. And then of course you got your CVTs. I'm a big fan of that ZF 8HP 8 speed that a lot of companies use. If they could throw that in this, that would definitely uh, improve the experience, but that's really the only criticism I have, and it's not a major criticism because it doesn't hurt the car that much. That is why if you're, if you're cross-shopping this with other models, that's why the CX-5 has a little bit lower fuel economy ratings than other vehicles in its class. Um, it is because of the transmission. I did do a real world fuel economy test on it and um, it did a little bit better than the EPA rating 
that video will be up eventually and when it is I'll put a link to it in the description but um, so it really doesn't hurt the overall package that much but I drive so many different new cars that when I accelerate like when I kind of turned around and accelerated a little bit out of there I can feel the transmission holding the gears longer than I expect just because most new cars have two or even four more gears if they have torque converter transmissions than this one does so they just snap through the shifts faster because the gears are a little bit narrower because there's more of them so but that's a relatively minor complaint and it's the rest of the package is worth the trade-off because the transmission does its job fine the shifts are smooth as far as I could tell, it's a relatively reliable transmission, so there's no, it, it's not really an Achilles heel, it's just sort of a, a slight annoyance. And the fact of the matter is, Mazda is a smaller automaker and they have limited resources. I mean, everybody has limited resources to one extent or another, so it's a little bit harder for them maybe to go, you know, get a transmission with more gears. This is what they have and it works well, so they're using it. And I like what they're doing. Mazda is differentiating themselves from its competitors. And I like that. And I think that's a good thing. And, you know, the car's a little bit smaller, but it drives nicer. The quality is very good on these cars. Um, as you can hear, not a lot of squeaks or rattles, none to speak of really. And this is uh, a brand new 2023 model, so you wouldn't expect any squeaks or rattles, but it does feel very, very solid. Um, similar comment on the 2022 Mazda 3 that I drove. Uh, it felt very similar in that regard. A lot of features for the money on this one. And it does feel nice to drive. If you can live with the space, I think maybe that's the biggest drawback on a car like this. But you know, not everybody needs a huge car. If you don't need maximum amount of passenger room, if you don't need maximum cargo room, um, well, quite frankly, I might even point you towards a Mazda 3 because that drives even nicer. Uh, just because it's lower to the ground, but you know if you can live with the size This is a very compelling choice and and above and beyond the transmission I think that it's the smaller size that might put people off on one of these when they're comparing cargo room and passenger room um, But if you can live with that trade-off and you want a car that's nice to drive this is well worth it It feels like a premium product. It feels nicer, a lot nicer, really, than the MSRP would suggest. And, you know, $28,570 is... What in the world is going on here? This guy's care hauling extra seats in his convertible. I love it. Make the best use of that convertible cargo hauling ability. Um, $28,570 is a lot of money. But based on inflation, it's not as much money as it used to be. But, and, and especially in the new SUV game, 28.5 ain't much. And um, this car's worth every bit of it. That's 70 miles an hour on a eh, not imperfect road, let's say. That's 60 miles an hour on a slightly better road. A little bit of wind noise, but not much to speak of. Relatively quiet cabin. We'll take it out on the freeway and see how it does. Right into the natural habitat of the Mazda CX-5. 
burning up the freeway. No, not really burning it up, more like going with the flow of traffic. 65 miles an hour. That is a, uh, what do you want to call it? Refinement check for you. Good visibility. One feature that did kind of surprise me on this car, even on a base model for the 2023s, you do get blind spot monitoring as a standard equipment. That's not an option on a CX-5. That is a very nice feature to have. A lot of auto manufacturers do charge extra uh, for the blind spot monitoring with the rear cross traffic alert. That is going to be standard on your CX-5. Definitely has the best steering feel. Of almost any new car at this price point that I've driven lately. I think the last car I reviewed was a Camry, a Toyota Camry, which is in a different class. And obviously Toyota is not as sporty of a um, automaker as Mazda is, but I was surprised it was a Camry SE, which does have the sport suspension. That car actually handled quite well, but the steering feel wasn't that great. This one kind of has it all. Oh. This is, this is really, and it's crazy that it would be in a little SUV, but this is the kind of car that you would go drive just for the fun of it. Just like, it's enjoyable to drive. I want to go further in it. And I can't really say that about a lot of the cars that I test drive these days. Man. That's pretty much the highest compliment that I can give this car as far as a test drive video goes. I want to drive it more. That's how good it is. So if you're looking for an SUV and you don't need a big one and you want something that is good to drive, you got to put this CX-5 near the top of the list because it certainly belongs there. And that's about all I got. I did a full review of it. There's a link to that somewhere, description, comments, I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.